House of Living Nightmares by Mike Mead. Fade in. Exterior, rural Midwest, day. A 4x4 pickup truck drives through the countryside as the sun sets in the distance. No sign of civilization to be seen. Superimpose, summer, 1981. The pickup turns off of the pavement and onto a dirt road. It enters a wooded area. Interior truck, day. Steve, 20s, in tank top and cutoffs, drives quickly down the bumpy dirt road. Marta, 20s, in bikini top and cutoffs, rides snuggled up next to him. She appears nervous. You're going to tell me what's bothering you or what? Nothing. Just, it's getting dark and you don't seem to know where you're going. Look, it wouldn't be named Lost Lake if it were easy to find. I just think we should have seen a sign for it before we turned off the paved road. You seriously think I'd get us lost? He glances at Marta. She gives him a knowing look. Uh, Other than that one time. One time? Okay. So I might have gotten turned around a few times, but that's not the same as being lost. Sure, whatever you say. What's with you? Oh, come on, Steve. Camping next to a lake? You know how much I hate water. It's not like you have to go in or anything. I know, but it'll look weird if I'm the only one there who's not. Seriously, you need to face your fears. I mean, sign up for some swimming lessons or something. (laughs) You're one to talk. At least my fear is rational. Steve ignores the comment and peers down the road. Something ahead in the distance catches his eye. Marta sees it too. Her expression turns to dread. Exterior house of living nightmares, day. A large 19th century estate sits at the end of the road. It is run down and has become overgrown with weeds and brush. An old tool shed sits nearby. The property is encircled by a low stone wall. The only opening is where the road passes through it. All of the trees surrounding the property lean toward the house, as if being pulled toward it. Steve drives the truck toward the stone wall. Interior truck, day. Steve slows down as they approach the opening in the wall. The gauges on the dashboard begin to fluctuate irregularly as he drives through the opening. Steve notices the gauges, bangs on the dashboard. What the hell? The engine sputters and dies. Oh, come on! The truck rolls to a stop. Steve puts his head down on the steering wheel. Marta opens her mouth to speak. Don't say it. Steve sits up and tries to start the truck. Nothing. He slams his head back down onto the steering wheel. Exterior, house of living nightmares, day. It's near dark as Steve and Marta climb out of the truck and walk up to the house. It appears to have been abandoned for quite some time. They hesitate at the front door. Think we should knock? Doesn't look like anyone's lived here in years, but... Don't want to get my ass filled with buckshot either, so maybe just in case. Steve bangs on the front door. They wait and listen for a few moments. The house remains silent. That's what I figured. He tries the knob and the door swings open as if on its own accord. They cautiously enter the house. Interior, house of living nightmares, entryway, night. Steve walks into the entryway a few steps and stops. Marta walks by as he closes the door behind her. She stops and turns to him. You gonna lock that? What the hell for? I just feel nervous about being broken down all the way out here, so far from help. I'd feel safer knowing any crazies are locked out. Whatever makes you feel better. He locks the door, then pulls a lighter out of his pocket and lights it. It illuminates the decayed walls just enough to see. Let's go see if we can find us a better light. Interior house, first floor hallway, night. Steve leads the way through the long hall. At the far left end of the hall is a stairway. He goes to the right. Marta follows close behind. A few doorways line both sides of the hallway. They enter a room on the left. Interior dining room, night. Steve and Marta walk to the large antique table in the center of the room. Two candelabras sit on it. Those'll do. He lights the candles and hands one of the candelabras to Marta. Some of the hot wax drips on her hand and burns it. Shit! Oh, damn. You all right? Yeah, fine. But I should run this under some cold water. There's got to be a bathroom here somewhere. I just hope it's got running water. Interior, first floor hallway, night. Marta leads the way to the far right end of the hallway. She opens the last door on the right, which is opposite the kitchen. It opens into a small, dingy bathroom. Ew! She enters the bathroom and tries the faucet. Rusty water rushes into the sink. The water slowly begins to clear up and she sticks her hand under it. Hey, I think I'm gonna freshen up a bit while I'm in here. You mind? No, not at all. 
I'm just going to wander around a bit and see what else I can find. Don't go too far. I don't want to be left alone in this place. I'll stay within screaming distance. Ha ha, very funny. She closes the door. I I thought it was funny. He begins to wander back down the hall. Interior bathroom, night. Marta sets the candelabra on the back of the toilet. She turns back to the sink and splashes some water on her face, then tries to turn off the faucet. Water continues to run. Oh, come on, you piece of junk. She fumbles with the faucet until the knob falls off. More water begins to gush. The pipes under the sink begin to shake violently. Marta backs away from the sink. The pipes suddenly burst. The floor is quickly flooded. She grabs the doorknob and desperately tries to open the door, but it doesn't budge. Steve! Help me! Steve! She bangs on the door with her fist. Interior, first floor hallway, night. Steve is halfway down the hall, but turns back as he hears Marta banging on the door. Oh, shit. Hang on, Marta. I'm coming. He sprints toward the bathroom as the sound of Marta's screams echo through the hall. Interior bathroom, night. Marta now stands in water up to her waist. The room continues to quickly fill with water, which extinguishes the candles. Get me the fuck out of here! She bangs on the door frantically. Interior, first floor hallway, night. Steve stands outside the bathroom door and desperately tries to force it open. Hang on, baby, I'm here! The sound of Marta's screams and banging continues, but then from somewhere down the dark hallway comes the sound of an electric drill. Steve turns and peers down the hall. A white shape materializes in the darkness. It's a demented dentist wearing a white, blood-splattered coat and surgical mask. He carries a hand drill with an exceptionally long drill bit. He strides towards Steve. No, 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 no! As the dentist approaches, he extends his free hand and grasps Steve tightly around the throat, pins him against the door. The dentist shoves the drill into Steve's mouth. Blood and teeth fly as Steve struggles and writhes in agony. The dentist pushes the drill deeper. Steve's eyes roll back and his body begins to convulse as the tip of the drill bit punches through the top of his head. Blood, skull fragments, and hair are flung from the bit. The dentist drops Steve's corpse on the floor. He stands back and admires his work. Interior, bathroom, night. Marta is now completely submerged in water as the room has filled to the top. She twitches for a few moments and then is still, her lifeless body suspended in the dark water.